since arriving at AUB, Professor Nelson King has been using instructional technologies in ways that have impressed ACC, particularly our Moodle system administrators. Professor King has kept us busy with challenging questions, requests, and suggestions. He also kept his students busy, and one of the courses he taught last fall had the highest online student interaction of all Moodle courses. Today, he is going to tell us about the exciting use of technology in his courses. I present to you Dr. Nelson King. I'm sure the ACC po folks will probably snicker when you when I say I'm a demanding user. Uh, but, but without them, I wouldn't be here today, and, um, and I, I owe them a debt, debt of gratitude. Actually, that's why I'm here. So I'm at the Oleon School of Business, and um, we have, a, um, as part of our AACSB accreditation, we were asked to, uh, um, to uh, well, we actually proposed using Bloom as one of our self-assessment methods. And uh, I didn't know anything about Bloom. Uh, I know nothing about blended learning, but I guess my background is industrial and systems engineering. I come from industry for 20 years, uh, and I'm kind of information technology guy, and I just kind of use these tools to, uh, to make my classroom more effective. So I guess what you're seeing is hardcore blended learning. <clears throat> and you can't do, um, you can't push up Bloom if you don't have a cooperative team of instructors. And we teach uh, um, multi-section uh, BBA courses. This semester we have 11, uh, five instructors. Uh, I, I guess it's kind of introducing me to Lebanese politics. You know, uh, trying to get consensus among five <laughs> instructors. Well, anyway. Um, <coughs> management information system is not an information technology course. The emphasis is on applying management concepts and information technology to business problems. So our students are a bit surprised when we start talking about management. And then um, the challenge for them is now that we're gonna load their brains with information technology, and then they have to apply it to business problems. So we've been struggling with this. So I guess this picture sort of represents my approach to teaching. <laughs> okay, what does this picture represent? You know all where, where this is, right? Okay. So it's, it's a picture of a street, right? Or cars parked on a street. <laughs> oh, there's a parking meter, a parking sign. But the cars are parked in the traffic lane. So and you probably can't see it. Are there, are there cultural differences in the way we park here? Or maybe interpret rules? So um, we have a challenge here at, at AUB. Um, we, 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 from up high, say we want to enforce academic integrity. We want our students to be critical thinkers, but uh, you can use pictures uh, to represent multiple purposes. And one of them is maybe we're not enforcing our rules. Okay, so let's move on. Why instructional technology? Well, obviously, the, the, the first priority is we want to encourage high, higher levels of cognitive learning. Or, uh, it's not exactly critical thinking. It's a part of critical thinking, at least in my uh, layman's view of uh, education. Uh, <clears throat> and uh, I guess a shock for, for me is uh, AUB student culture is a little bit different than I, I, I grew up with. Uh, and this just concept of just-in-time learning you know, I, I mean, maybe my students are different from yours, but has, do your students pick up a textbook before the finals? I mean, some of you might have good students, but uh, most of mine don't. And then, you know, copying and cheating is rampant. And so is there a way to use instructional technology to work around those problems? And, and finally, you know, um, automation. You know, we have a lack of teaching support, teaching resources. Uh, our Info 200 this, this year is sharing one GA for 11 sections. So uh, even if they weren't proctoring, um, you know, we, we have to share. So I needed to find a way to, to teach the courses at the level I want to do, um, but also like, you know, make it through the promotion cycle. <laughs> so uh, this is what I've come up with over the last uh, three or four, actually uh, three years with Moodle. 
So these are the technologies we're going to, um, most of them we'll look at you know, at, at the end of the, the, my time. Um, I won't show you the Moodle project course where all of the Info 200 instructors you know, can share ideas, put our resources. You know, where was the previous from two years ago? And now we, we have them all in one place. And my focus is on participations, uh, and I'll get to that um, in a second. But the grade book in Moodle is very popular with students because they like feedback, immediate feedback. I'm very slow at grading. Uh, calendar event is the agenda. That's how I'm doing my lesson planning for them. Uh, and so they know what's going on because you'll see in a moment that I give a lot of participation so they kind of lose track. And uh, I adopted the, the digital media library this year because, well, you know, we don't really have internet here at AUB or in Lebanon in general. And I can't, you know, use up all my students' bandwidth to watch a couple videos for class. They're just not gonna do it. So I store it on the digital media library and they can download it and everybody's happy. Um, so, and this semester with great reluctance, I said, I'll try the Turnitin integration with Moodle. Everybody know about that? It's really cool. Okay, uh, I, I, when I won the award for the most uh, page views last semester, I said, well, my goal isn't to to, to get the highest number of page views, it's like I want them to be using it for something useful. So I've actually cut down the semester, but I'm still, for the first 14 weeks, I'm averaging about 900 page views per student. Um, so uh, that's pretty, pretty high. Uh, and my participation represents like 60% uh, of those page views. Uh, and 95% of my participations are Moodle questionnaires. So you see a little handout here. It's two. Uh, these are the participations we did in class this semester. Okay, so when I talk about par participation, that's where they come from. And you see, there's only uh, one or two that are not Moodle questionnaires. Okay, it would be higher if I teach or was teaching MWF, but um, it's not. Uh, one of the things I use is um, questionnaire for using questionnaires. So this is an end of term um, uh, questionnaire we administered. Uh, about a week ago, and let's see, can someone pass this, pass this around? You can look at it, and I'm just gonna show you like one or two excerpts from it. And because uh, I wanna know if this, my strategy that I'm gonna show you about participations is really the learning preference that they want. And uh, so you can see number three, uh, I gave you five choices, and then the, um, choice three was mostly participations is their uh, preferred uh, learning style. Uh, you can see a third say mostly lectures and my ICEs get dinged because of that. Um, but uh, to me, over half the students like what we're doing. Um, um, my colleagues and I, I'm, I'm the more hardcore instructional technology guy, but uh, some others have adopted in various forms. And um, in general, they like it. So uh, I almost gave up on it last semester, but. Uh, I decided to hold out for one more time. So why do, do, have I gone this way? Well, you know, I realize um, that a lot of students don't come to class, but they do just as well as anybody else. So what's happening? Well, I, my, my thought was, hey, we're teaching at level one and two of Bloom, and that's like spoon feeding. And, you know, I wanna be known for, this is one of the comments from uh, a few years ago, you made the course more interesting than it is. You know, I wanna be known for more than that. Uh, so I'm thinking perhaps the students are dumbing down to the level we're teaching. So I said, let's try to raise it up and see what happens. See if they revolt. Last semester they revolted. This semester they're happy. So I think maybe I'm on the right track. Uh, so the other handout, which we really don't have time to get into, but I think it's pretty cool, shows you the original bloom and the, um, the verbs that um, characterize the levels of bloom. And the bloom, what I call bloom 2.0, which is, um, uh, a modification of it. The Bloom 2.0 are, are the students of Bloom, so it's really, this is all Bloom. Um, and in our AACSB plan, we said, we're trying to get our undergraduates to level three and four, and uh, masters and executives to five and six. Uh, but um, with a little reflection, uh, let me see. Let's, let's go this way. Let's try, let's try it again. Getting ahead of myself. I tend to do that. <laughs> Uh, differences in bloom. Here's an exam example from the, la the one we, uh, we, we, we've just given. W the first uh, is what are the activities in system definition phase of an information system? 
And then the same question, but a higher bloom. What is the key activity for the system definition, definition phase of the BOSU case? What's the difference? Just? Huh? OK. So uh, the, the first question is a restatement of whatever, what's in the book. OK? So they just kind of regurgitate um, what's in the book. The second, we changed a couple words. Key, right? Activity means um, you need to analyze, to compare, evaluate. And uh, apply it to the BOSU case is um, application level three. So, so with like two or three words different in sentence, you're already at higher, higher bloom. Now, believe me, we spent hours arguing over what level, what the question should say. And, and we still don't get it right, um, but we try. <clears throat> so I need to give you context um, uh, because um, te my teaching strategy involves the, the entire course. So you can see the difference between past and present. So you've got to get a textbook that supports a higher level bloom. Um, we've always had a project that was higher, higher bloom, and we've been pushing the exams up, but you're time limited, so you can, can only do so much. And, and our reputation in the past was you just study the slides and you do well. And it's like, I don't want that reputation. Now, now this semester, you have to work. So I'm happy because we're, you know, we're, we're pushing them. Um, so let's focus on the teaching. My teaching style. I, I, I'm a little different from everybody. I start off first day of class saying MIS, Management Information System, is really a makeover inside because I'm kind of trying to make you think. Um, it's not very hands-on, I call it participatory. That's why we do participations. If you want to come, you come and learn. But if you don't, you know, you can do these from home, online. Um, Micro-evaluation, so I give them, you know, the 40 or 45 participations you see on the list. I don't lecture very often, except when it's difficult. And I try to say there's no correct answer. There's better answers, but, um, and there's wrong answers. But you know, when you get to work, nobody's, your boss isn't gonna say, you know, that's the right answer. No, the boss doesn't ask that. And I try to model the, uh, the, the supervisor of, the, their, of their future, caring but demanding. So um, uh, I'd say I'll treat you as young professionals as long as you act like young professionals. When you cross the line, I'll treat you like students, and you probably don't want me to be angry. Because uh, last semester, I wrote up 20% of my students for uh, honor code violations, and it took our student affairs committee four months to process them all. So, uh, but uh, my teaching really is embodied in these ungraded participations. Uh, I'm running out of time, but the book here is um, what I cons we consider a higher level Bloom book, and it allows us to teach at the higher, higher levels. So my objective of the participation is risk-free, but it's automatically graded. What's the cool thing about the Moodle questionnaire? It's anonymous, and they get to practice 40 or 50 times during the semester answering higher cognitive level questions. Um, they need to think quicker. They're very, if you give enough time, they can figure it out. But can they figure it out in 15 or 20 minutes? And because that's what they get on an exam, and that's what they're gonna get in real life. So, uh, I push them to, to um, do things quickly. Um, and I don't know about your students, but my students actually have to read the book now two or three times a week, which to me is a great accomplishment, okay? Uh, so typical participation, I show them a video or a, a re we read something in the textbook or look at a website. I ask level one, two questions to see if they're reading the book or you know, watching the video. And then you know, we ask progressively harder questions. Then after they've answered them, we discuss them. Um, I pick several of your responses, this, um, and they ask the students, what do you think? Is this the right answer? And in the beginning, you know, they're always saying, well, what's the right answer? I said, I don't know what the right answer. It depends on your perspective. Okay, so you got this handout. So uh, just quick insights on participations. F more than four or five per, per week, and you know, they'll revolt. Um, discuss the good responses in class. Students, students actually like this. Um, some actually volunteer, you know, pick mine, you know, um, but most are like, if it's a good one, they say, oh, that was mine, okay? Um, and um, I, I also use them to offer makeups uh, because they're kind of point crazy. I don't know about your students. And so I, what they do is we have 60 or 70 responses. I let them look at them all. Tell me what's the best answer. 
So that's their makeup, instead of just repeating what everybody's already done. And you need to spot check for abuse because they will abuse the system because it's all honor system, okay? Okay, we're gonna go to Moodle now. Now, this, I, presentations are really risky when you go live, but we'll try. Okay, so th my Moodle courses are not pretty, um, and there's a lot, as you can see. This is a one semester's worth of work here, okay? Uh, a lot of them are resources, uh, supplemental resources. Very few people look at them, but that's okay. Here I mentioned the agenda. So this is an uh, event. You can create this. And you can create this um, um, uh, list of Moodle activities, and I paste in the links so they can find them. So this is the one uh, that's being passed around, the evaluation. Um, yeah, I, I was amazed because, you know, um, over half of our students responded and they didn't get any points for it. And it was during, you know, right before finals. So, uh, and I'm going, got some really great data. So I mentioned I like to use video. I use like one a session usually, about 30 over the semester. So here's one of them, just to give you an example of what you do with it. Do you think there'll be a wait at the restaurant? Mm -hmm. Should we be walking on the tracks? Yeah, check the schedule. The trains don't run Sunday morning. Except for my 8 o'clock classes, they like this one. Okay, but what, what, what's it telling you? Well, obviously, you have the level 1, you know, level 2 stuff. You know, these people walk on the track, they get hit by the car, I mean, by the train, right? But then you say, well, well what's, what's the message here? You know, it's talking about your data uh, integrity, right? And then that you leads into a discussion of data integrity. Okay, this this one I actually don't have participation on because it's just kind of uh, it's, it's my wake up videos. Okay, um, uh, <coughs> okay, so um, let me switch. Okay, so this is what a participation using questionnaire looks like. You have, uh, you know, just questions and open uh, essay area for, for people to type their responses. And um, uh, this was a particular, how many have seen the Diet Coke Mentals experiment video? Okay, a few of you, okay. Uh, like only 10 million people have seen it. It's nothing compared to Susan Boyle, but at the time, it was, it was the, this was like the first video that went viral. So, you know, we introduced information system through talking about viral marketing. And one of the, the, the innovations is, I always ask, how much time did this activity take and did you get any help? Um, the first is because they always say it's too much work. But you know, these usually take 10, 20 minutes, okay? And did you get any help? Because I'm trying to uh, enforce you know, the issue of academic integrity. You know, I mean, and if you look at some other responses, it's like, I got my mother, you know, my mother's a marketing manager, so she helped me. You know, that's cool. You know, I mean, because it gives you some feedback. Okay, so that's one example. Uh, <clears throat> here, here, here's um, another pr participation. So you can see, you know, the, the same st style. Obviously, you won't be able to read it, but there's boxes where they put the responses. And then it's, as a, an instructor, you go to all responses. There's 69 out of 77. So that's typical response rate I get. Um, you know, some people just refuse to do them, and it's 10% of your grade. So, I mean, what can you do? Uh, and then they, they answer it, and then this is, this, this is what we discuss in class. You know, um, usually only half of them do it by the time we actually do the, the discussion. And then we just look at them, and, um, and, and you know, it's kind of, uh, what do you call it, um, on the fly. So it's really dangerous because, you know, you, you don't know what they've written because they're typing in class and you say, okay, time's up, submit. And, and then you have to, you know, assess them like in real time. So it's a bit challenging, but, um, uh, you know, I'm trying to encourage them to think on their feet so I figure I can think on my feet as well. Oh, okay. I've been giving the flag. So, um, anyway, let's see. Since I've been giving the flag, let me... Summarize, and then I'll give you a, uh, a password in a second. Um, 
my strategy on participation is part of this philosophy of teaching that I have. I'm not sure if it works. I'm not sure my students do any better, but I think I'm preparing them for the future. Um, but it's a long-term investment. This has been a three-year project, and you know it's not any immediate payback. You know your your ICEs don't go up, uh, and your students don't realize what you've done to them until their first job, and then you see them at the job fair and they go, "Wow, you know, thank you for your class." And, and I think the last point is um, it's costly, and at the current time, you know, I mean. You don't need, don't need to speak Arabic to know that if you don't have your publications, it doesn't matter how good of a teacher you are, right? Okay, so um, I've allowed guest enrollment if you want to look. Info200FTS is the password um, if you want to you know, look around the course. <laughs>